Now on the exhaust port, remember I'd already ported this once. And then I found a trick in here that would enable me with that cast iron manifold to try to make it work. So what I did was I went down in here and trenched here and here for my clover leaf. I did the math on it and I brought my trim to the point where the math blended into the bowl correctly. While true, it really needs a 160 valve. There's nothing I can do about it, but this still is going to help dramatically as it pulls it into the cast iron manifold. So what I'm going to show you here is this is my starting point. Now that's kind of dangerous because you're getting into where it's kind of thin from the factory. It's kind of easy. I'm just connecting the dots, so to speak, from trench to trench. And I do leave a touch uh, to the inside of the line because I like to have a little bit of a reversionary lip on the head, um, you know, for, for in re reversion gas purposes. But I don't leave much, just a, a hair much inside the factory line of the 1405. You got to grind in the area where the trench is to pull it level and then on the bottom I don't really remove no material I just blend the trench out. Remember what I said you do not take material out of the floor of the porch. Then, of course, you take your finger and you feel it. No ruffles, no ridges. It's smooth. And that's it. So this is about all the grinding on the head. You've been with me pretty much all through this. And uh, the only thing I'm going to do now is a little bit of minute touch-up work on it. Um, now that that material's done, I've got the dimensions I want. I have got to CC the port, and I have got a pressure check it that I can put it together, and we can finish watching the assemble of the holder boulder motor. I will right, we'll show you the roof mod. Okay, what we got going on here was a, a last second change. <laughs> I could sack it. About nine hours worth of cutting here. Uh, the exhaust manifolds that goes on these boats have water running through them and one of them had a leak or was busted or warped so he bought another one and the China manifold had a totally mismatched port shape on it so he bought American, good for him this time. And I'm going to let you take a look at this exhaust manifold because what I found was there was some pretty serious horsepower that could be had by modifying this thing. Kind of like what Brzezinski does to the cast iron manifolds on them round track cars that are in them classes where they have to run a cast iron factory manifold. Um, Kind of along them lines. Let's see what we got. And took this, which I can't tell you enough how small this was. Uh, it had material on the inside on that stock silver piece of crap that they put in the uh, Felpro um, box gasket set. 
and not to mention how uneven level this was. It, you know, when they cast it, it had it was totally off, up and down, and side to side. It had big giant ridges all in it. So what I done was I took. Remember that this is upside down. That kind of that kind of messed me a little bit. So the roof would be here. And uh, what I did was I got the bolts and ran through it. And I didn't totally make it a hundred percent of the gasket. I wanted. Um, a, just a little bit on the inside because as you can see man does it get close oh yeah and another thing I laid a straight edge across it and this thing out of the damn box was warped almost five thousandths so I had to take this brand new manifold to the machine shop and surface it to get it straight or else he would have been out there running the boat and it would have started leaking right there made a horrible sound so I did get that machined up. So now that, like I said, that this is turned this way, I had to come back over here now to the head, and I'm going to get you some close-ups and scribe it. So this shape here is really good. Uh, it's almost the same size as the gasket. So we're good there, and I had to go back all the way to the wall, over two and a half inches, come up from underneath, pull the short turns, because the center was absolutely uh, the worst part of this uh, little puzzle. So let's take a look now at the, uh, the head, and as you can see, I had already ported this thing pretty good uh, up to the stock silver gasket. But now, um, I'm going to have to go in here. Mainly what we're going to do is width. I've already scribed it and located it. And I'm going to be cutting width, pulling the corners out. Of course, you never cut meat out of the bottom uh, on the exhaust port. If anything, I, as I've told you all a thousand times, I've welded it up. So I'm going to go in here. Now, I'm not going to go all the way. To the edge, I'm going to leave about 20 thousandths inside that ring so that this circle is inside this and it's got a little bit of a reversionary lip in it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start cutting it and then I'm going to let you see how I leave that little bitty reversionary lip in there. Okay, let's back off. Okay, in order to make that work, we're sticking with the 19 or excuse me a 150 valve instead of going to a 106 this is a cross sectional area trick where I'm creating a really smooth transfer of funnel coming out going into that manifold and believe it or not that water manifold ain't as bad as probably what it looks I've seen worse restricted car manifolds but the way that I'm going to blend that and let it roll in, I'm going to have over two inches of straightness. When this comes out and the flange connects to it, I'm going to have almost two inches of straightness of laminar flow before it begins the turn. The key to this whole thing was starting with a small valve and letting it expand and go into that water log. We'd done testing on this years ago and found that with cast iron manifolds. I'm sure what Brzezinski has known for a very long time. Them guys are sticks of dynamite, I tell you. But anyway, um, we're doing this to it, and hopefully what, what we was thinking was going to be a major hit of 40 or more horsepower might not be but about a 15 horsepower loss compared to a header if it lays in right. Now, I do it typical head bite style. Only this time, since the porting and the bowl and roof and all that's done is paid, I'm only going two inches back to start my program. I will say this. This ended up being what at first was a gasket match to possibly being one of the most important parts of the port. And it wasn't figured out of the porting. It wasn't figured out to the end because 
Holder Boulder had one American manifold and one China manifold and it caused me to take a second look at the shape and design to realize that we can take this and turn this into something good instead of having it a negative disadvantage. When you're porting heads y'all and you're doing this stuff there's going to be times that when you're in there porting it you're going to change direction. Your mind is constantly thinking about it and then something will happen where you'll say, wait a minute, if I do this and do this, so what sometimes it started off as a something written in stone, you end up having to erase it. And maybe not much, and I don't do this often, but it's just after you do enough of this, you start to, to know what it wants and what it don't want. So in this case here, this is very important. It, it did cause a delay on uh, getting everything set up. It cost about probably 12 hours and then 9 hours. But is it worth it? Heck yeah. This is the second baddest cast iron small block Chevrolet cylinder head I have ever done without poking through. I CC the intake runner volume and with a 1850 valve this head hit 191 cc's on the intake runner without busting through with a 1850 valve. I mean, I'm just beside myself right now on it. And if I go to the 194 valve, reset the bowls and reshape it, I will break my all time best mark of 193. To, uh, the best I ever did was 194 cc's on a set of double hump 186's. That was many years ago. All right, let's go ahead. I'm forming the clover leaf. Like I said, I'm not having to go back to the bowls too much. Now one thing I will tell you, this head is very thin, so don't go in there willy-nilly digging a trench like you've seen me do. I am trenching it, but I'm leaving a lot of radius. Look at what I'm trenching with. See, I'm doing this instead of the finger because if I try to use the finger I'm really scared I'm going to bust through that port and the exhaust needs at least a hundred and twenty thousandths is the thinnest that I like to take the wall thicknesses to. Alright I'm going to continue the mild trenching turning them around knock that out then we got to finish what little bit left is on the intake port to complete holder boulder 305601 